Hey everybody, Karthik Subramaniam over at Avi Schools. Welcome to our podcast. Got your email here. Says, Dear Karthik, I took your class five years ago. I'm doing well in real estate and I think it's time to hire my first assistant. How do I go about finding someone? And when did you hire your first assistant? It's a pretty good email here, uh, especially when the real estate market is doing well right now, as it has been doing over the last several years. A lot of our students are making a significant amount of money and you're looking to maybe leverage your business. Now, I hired my first assistant probably, I'd say, four years into my business. Uh, and mainly because I doing a, I had a lot of plates in the air. So I was running my normal real estate brokerage business. I was working at the real estate school. I had, you know, a lot of plates in the air and I really didn't know uh, how to not feel so overwhelmed. So, uh, and my first assistant actually is still working with us now. Her name is Sophia. She's the manager of our real estate school now, and she's uh, been working with us for quite some time. And I think I just got lucky because I've had some really, really, really uh, big hiring mistakes, frankly, uh, mistakes that I didn't see coming and mistakes that I didn't even know uh, could be made. So. The first thing I'd say about hiring your first assistant is at some level, it's a little bit of a crapshoot. You know, there's disc analysis and there's personality tests that you can have people take online and see if they're somehow like either uh, genetically predisposed to the position that you're trying to hire for. And, you know, for me personally, I haven't really ever used those personality tests. I'm not saying that that's a right or wrong way to do it. I probably should just as an additional layer of scrutiny, but I never really relied on those, mainly because I had a student of mine who took my class probably, I don't know, 10 years ago, I'd say, and I'll never forget this conversation. He goes, uh, you know, I, I interviewed at another real estate company and they made me take this personality assessment and the broker said I was all wrong for real estate, but I want to try it anyway. And then 10 years later, he took my class, got his broker's license, has his own company in uh, either Gardena or Torrance, somewhere in the South Bay, and he's thriving and doing really well. So part of me doesn't really care about those personality tests just because I feel like, you know, if, if, you're a, if you're a hustler and you want to grind it out, you can do that no matter what some online personality test says. But I would basically make sure first that you write a job description. So write down all the things that you want this person to do, things that you're that you personally feel overwhelmed with. So they could be personal things like, you know, maybe you want to get your car washed once or twice a week make and put that as part of the job description. Maybe you need your dry cleaning picked up or dropped off. I'm talking about personal uh, things. For real estate, maybe you want someone to run your files for you because you don't want to or can't use the transaction coordinator in your own office. Maybe it's inputting your listings in the MLS or you know overseeing photographers and videographers. So first, I would write down what you want this assistant to do and then try to hire somebody that either has experience doing those things or someone who's willing to learn because you could always coach and train someone to get the job done, number one. The second thing that I would say is make sure you're paying a fair wage. You know, if you're trying to eliminate turnover, I've had pe I have people that work for me in my office, again, that have been with me for five years, 10 years, 13 years, you know, so, and it's always because I always try to think, how can I put more money in their pocket? How can I make them more money? Because when they make more money, I'm making more money, the company's making more money. So paying your people a fair wage and a living wage, and uh, I'll let you think about whether or not you want to bonus them on every file or whether you want to give them, you know, metrics that they need to hit. And if they hit them, you'll pay them out. But I guess planning is super important in this. Make sure that, uh, you know, it's not just your buddy that you like to drink with on Friday night that just got laid off and you're like, hey, start with me on Monday. I'll pay you under the table. Plus, speaking of that, you got to make sure when, when you hire employees that you have workers' compensation insurance and you're withholding taxes and they're properly classified as either an employee or an independent contractor. So, I'm assuming at this stage in your career, if you're five plus years in and you uh, you know have done well enough to have an assistant, I'm guessing you have a CPA that does your taxes. I would make sure that you talk to them about having the proper workers' compensation insurances in place, and you know making sure that 
because you're a business, right? So you need to make sure that you're following the rules. Unfortunately, or fortunately, the same rules that apply to a big company like Starbucks or Walmart, when it comes to insurance and withholding and taxes, those same rules filter down to you at the small business level. So, you know, you want to make sure that you're staying compliant with those laws. But, uh, you know, the key thing is just too many real estate agents hire people that are a friend of a friend or, you know, the spouse of someone who just got laid off and, you know, three, four months later, they wonder why it didn't work. So I'd make sure that you have a job description in writing of what you need done. Make sure that you're holding them accountable. So like, for example, with me, I have a staff meeting with my people once a week, once a week. Now, some people that I know have meetings every morning and at night. So I know one person that's a manager at a large real estate office in San Diego. I was talking to her and she was saying that her owner, uh, the owner of her company, makes her get on a call with him in the morning before her day starts, setting goals and objectives for the day. And then at the end of the day, before she goes home, she has to call him and then go over the goals that she set for the day and which ones she met she met, and which ones she didn't meet. To me, that would drive me crazy. I, that's way too... Uh, you know, granular of a job. I just don't think I could have the patience not only to uh, attend that meeting, but to lead it, right? To hold someone that accountable, I think for me is probably not the way I, I like to work naturally. But, you know, these are things you'll have to think about. I'm sure it'll, uh, you, you'll work through it. But, you know, I want to congratulate you on getting to a point where you can hire your first assistant. It's an exciting thing uh, to to try to leverage out and you know have help because to be honest real estate can be a very lonely business and it's good to have someone there that you can count on as your right hand so if you have any questions let me know don't forget to follow me on instagram my information is on the screen at karthix picks as well as the school at obby schools on instagram and facebook we will catch you guys another time if you have a question that you want me to answer uh go ahead and shoot me an email or shoot me a note or send me a message on this system and I'll, uh, I'll, if it's broad enough, I'll, I'll read your question online and give you my two cents. We'll talk to you guys next time. Take care.